wanted to share a project that I just did and um, it was super fun so I wanted to share it and it's basically a paper quilt a scrappy paper quilt <laughs> sort of and where it got inspired from was um, first I made it out of fabric and I was inspired by 16th century fabric slashing and cantha quilts that are made in India and cantha quilts are basically recycled quilts so they take two pieces of fabric um, and basically lay uh, old clothing and old things old fabric items mostly clothing uh, in between the two pieces of fabric and then hand stitch them together to create um, quilts so nothing is thrown away and they're actually beautiful pieces of art I really like them um, so that inspired me and then I love fabric slashing I just I'm fascinated by the whole technique and the history and everything so I basically took those two techniques combined them using my stash my bits and bobs that I can't throw away <laughs> so it's basically a sandwich I used an old poly uh, fabric I think this is from the 60s really bright print and I used that as my base and then I used um, a cotton organdy that I think is from the early 19th not 19th century 20th century <laughs> and um yeah and then this is actually from one of my kids jeans from when they were little like I don't know they were really young and I would cut them off to make shorts I think this is part of the knee because it's all holy so I just used um more fabric and so this is going to be a little pocket that goes on the front and I think the whole thing will be a pocket in my junk journal I think I'm gonna make this the big pocket and make this a little pocket but I haven't fully decided so I've left it as is so after I did this I thought oh I think I would love to do this out of paper because I have lots of bits and bobs of paper and I think it would be super cool so that's what I'm going to show you uh, how to do so this is the first one I made and um I ended up using some stitching on the sewing machine and I also hand stitched. I wanted to see what I liked better and if it made a difference, like how the paper reacted. Um, <clears throat> and then the second one I did, uh, I used the same technique. I didn't change the technique at all, except that I decided to do all hand stitching on this one. And then I did wavy stitches instead of straight stitches. So you could do any kind of stitches. Um, you know, you could, I think it would be cool to even do a, a grid. A grid would be fun. Um, you could do diagonal. I mean, oh gosh, it's, you could do anything. It would be so fun. So they're super text, textural. They have lots of layers of paper. I think you could use these as a journal cover too if you used um, slightly heavier papers than what I'm, what I'm using here. I think they would be really cool. I think they'd make great tags. Um, pockets like I said about the fabric one I think these would make great pockets I think tags would be super fun super super fun and they just feel nice I mean if you're if you love paper if you're watching this you probably do love paper like I do and it's just fun to get out all of your little pieces that are, you've just been hoarding because you don't want to throw it away and make something new something fun so I'm going to show you how to do it Okay, so this is what you need. You need some painty papers. And you can, I would suggest you start with lighter weight papers just because for your first one, just to get a feel for it. And the thicker the paper, the harder it's going to be to stitch. And if you have a sewing machine, it would be easier anyway. But even then, you're going to go through lots of layers of paper. So for your first one, I would really encourage you to do something lighter weight. So both of these started with a paper paper a painty paper base this is a book page that I painted on um, so that's what's behind all this paper is some painted paper and this is some tracing paper that also was painted and then on the top layer because we're going to make a sandwich just like I did with the fabric and uh, the top layer is tracing paper this was just plain white tracing paper this was painty tracing paper and then in the middle are going to be all of your painty paper scraps. So you can pull out magazine pages, book pages, and you'll see in a minute because I'm going to show you what I use. I just used everything. I just pulled out. I had the only rule that I followed, besides I didn't want it to be too heavy, was color. I just went by color. I went through my all my stuff and just started pulling out colors and stayed in the color family. So these are blues and purples, and these are mostly blues and 
blues. <laughs> no, there's some gold. It's blues and gold and uh, some white. Okay, so once you have your paper picked out, then you're going to need some glue. And um, I ended up using mostly uh, this Tombow Mono glue. I also actually used a little bit of the Elmer's Extreme because I did some, well, and you'll see kind of some collagey things, which with really thin paper, so that worked better. Uh, I think you could really use any quick drying glue. I, I didn't use it, but I think this would have worked really well, this Turbo Tacky Glue, um, because it's really, because you want something that dries pretty flexible, because this paper is going to be, it's definitely um, bendy, you know, and so you don't want paper, you don't want glue that will crack. And you'll also need some scissors. I ended up using these because I can't find my favorite scissors. I'm really afraid that uh, I accidentally threw them away. I mean, I didn't throw them away, but I think they fell off my desk into my trash can, and I think my trash can got emptied. Oh, I hope not. I don't know. Anyway, so I had to use these. Because what you want is you want something, you want your smallest pair of scissors that are super sharp um, with kind of pointy ends. At least that's what I found to be the best thing to use. You can also use uh, a craft blade like an X-Acto knife, um, you could do this too. And this would work for one of the steps, but you're still gonna want a pair of scissors. I just think it'll come in handy. Most of the time I tear the paper, but sometimes I did wanna trim off stuff. So you definitely want a pair of scissors and you may wanna try this and just see, you may prefer um, the step where we actually open everything up. You may prefer this, I don't know, but it's definitely doable with scissors and that's what I ended up doing for the most part. Um, you'll also need needle and thread. You can either use the sewing machine to do this, uh, and I prefer the smaller a smaller needle. The smaller the hole, the better, because the bigger the hole, because paper, you know, doesn't give like fabric. You know, when you punch a hole in fabric, um, most fabric, like a woven fabric, once the hole is punched through, then the fabric usually has a tendency to work its way back together, so the hole isn't huge, you know, in typical sewing. Um, but with paper, as you know, that's not the case, right? So, um, so you can use a sewing machine um, if you'd like, or if you hand sew, I used embroidery floss and a needle, really just any needle. You just don't want it too big. Um, I prefer a milliner's needle because the milliner's needle is the same size from, you know, from the shaft all the way up, whereas other needles, the hole right here kind of uh, comes out a little bit. And so actually when it goes through fabric or paper, it actually makes a bigger hole because the actual, the needle, the eye of the needle is larger than the shaft. So when you use a milliner's needle, that's not the case. If you don't have a milliner's needle, uh, no problem. Just use whatever you've got. And again, I used embroidery floss. You could use, uh, you want something heavier than the regular thread. So if, you, if you're going to use a regular thread hand sewing, I would definitely double it. Um, you're going to be really careful not to cut the paper when you're hand sewing. So I'd probably double that thread or use a heavier like buttonhole type thread or something. Again, just use what you have, especially for this first one. Just kind of use this as your, you know, your play thing. And don't get too worried about having everything just right because the whole purpose of this is for it to not be perfect. Just fun. <laughs> So here's the paper okay, that I chose to use. I had a combination of painty papers, paper from magazines and books, even some security envelopes. And um, the base is a painted book page. It's really ugly. <laughs> and I just start adding paper. I do a combination of um, decoupage like this, where I just use my glue stick and add some color. And then the bigger pieces, um, I only glue part way because the goal here is to secure the paper but not make it completely adhere to the page because we want that texture when we cut open the top layer later. So here I am just picking up papers, tearing them up, up <laughs> and gluing them in place. And that's why I suggest to use a fast dry glue because you don't want to sit around and wait for them to be secured before you do, you know, the next part. You just want to keep moving, get this done. 
Because I will say this is a little, it's super fun, but it, it does take a little while because you need a good, even, well, not even like perfectly even, but you do want to spread the paper around and try to make a fairly even layer. And that's exactly when I say layer, I mean, it'll, actually it'll be layers because we're, I'm just going to keep adding layers. So here I'm doing the base layer and you'll notice that sometimes I glue on the skinny end of the paper or whatever. And some like that one I just laid down was on the long edge and I'm not thinking too hard here. Uh, the, the thing that I am considering is, you know, color placement and then also how, um, you know, where do I want to adhere it? And there's really no right or wrong here. And what you'll find is after you do a few of these, you'll, you'll kind of just know, I, I don't know how to explain it other than you'll just kind of get a feel for it. Um, but, but like I said, there's no right or wrong. You're not going to mess this up. So, um, when you start layering on top, like see how I just put that half circle on top. Um, just be aware of like where it's touching because some places I actually do directly glue on top of the glued paper below it and see that one I just stuck underneath that purple paper so the gray paper um, I stuck under the purple paper so you'll notice I just keep doing that I add layers I stick them under over <laughs> whatever and since I don't I didn't come with a plan uh, I just started gluing you'll see that I just I keep experimenting, you know, when I add another piece of paper, I sometimes I'll lift up, see I'm lifting that up going, oh yeah, I want to lift, I want to lay it there. So, you know, don't be afraid of this process. Just, I think it's very intuitive. And if you, if you try not to think too hard about it, I think it works better. So that one, see, I'm going to lay, I'm going to glue that one completely down. So that one is going to stay put. It's not going to lift up at all. It's just going to be texture on the very bottom layer. I really like the handmade paper for this process too. I mean, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying any if you don't have it in your stash um, for this first one. But handmade paper has such beautiful texture and um, it's just, I don't know. Well, I love paper. You love paper. You know what I mean. <laughs> it's just, it's just yummy. And so those half circles are um, things that I punched out with my circle punch uh, in a, out of a book had a lot of graphic, um, colorful images in it. And I just, I loved the colors. And so I, I basically punched these for color. So, you know, pink and purple and blue. And so I have those in my stash. Um, and no, they're not organized by color. They should be, but they're not right now. Yeah. So I found this process um, actually very um, meditative. Cause like I said, I wasn't thinking too hard. I just, I pull out all those papers that I showed you. So that see, there's some scrapbook paper and just started doing it. Just started gluing, not thinking too hard, just gluing. This is a really great way too to use up scraps that um, you're not super crazy about. Like I'm not super crazy about that purple scrapbook paper. I mean, it's not ugly. I just don't love it. Like I don't look at it and go, Oh, I want to make something out of that. I've had that paper forever and ever and ever. So it's really great that I can use it in this project. I also have some typewritten things that I, on my typewriter. And so I found that I really like gluing on top of the paper. So you see that half circle that I just glued the text to. So that's partially glued down. And then I actually completely glued down that word. I think it's, I love you. Yeah, I love you. So, <laughs> Because you're really not going to know till you start. Um, oh, oh, I need to mention here. That's Tyvek. That's painted Tyvek. So I decided to use Fabri-Tac to glue that down because I just felt like it needed some extra oomph to get that to hold down. I wasn't really sure about my other glue for that. And that the fabric the Fabri-Tac works really great for that. And I will say too, if you choose to use heavier things, first of all, I wouldn't recommend it in your first one because you'll get frustrated when you go to sew. And even on your sewing machine, if you use too thick of paper, especially if it's like thick and thinner, you know, at the same time, um, you might struggle because you may want to use a bigger needle for some of the thicker things, but then it'll make really big holes in the thinner paper. So I would suggest for your first, at least for your first one, to try to stick to similar weight. Now here I'm, I, I am obviously mixing the weight cause I've got a really lightweight 
handmade paper that's almost like tissue paper and then I have magazine book paper and then I have I think Tyvex the heaviest I don't think I have any cardstock in here um but you do want your layers fairly even so like if you're using multiple and those are both tracing paper by the way that I'm looking at right now I love tracing paper y'all I just love that I love using it for all different kinds of stuff uh I would just keep in mind though if you're using multiple uh, weights of the paper to try to spread the weight so like if you're using a heavy cardstock for example I would try to spread it around on your paper so that it's uh, not concentrated in any one particular area because the finished piece will just lay nicer and you'll have a, an easier time doing the process that we're going to do later. So the reason why I'm just playing this through fast is because I kind of want you to see my process. It's easier to show you than to, to tell you what, what I'm doing here. And see that one I'm completely, I use my glue stick and I completely glued that security envelope down. Because since I'm using a book page, it is quite thin paper. And so I need to make sure that I'm basically covering the whole surface of the paper because it needs to be reinforced. You know, I could just mount it on another heavier sheet. I mean, you could do that. You could you know, glue it to a piece of cardstock, you know. Um, and obviously you can't, you can do this any way you want, but that's what I did. I decided to use this book page that I had just used to basically paint some excess paint off of my brushes <laughs> and, um, and just use that. I mean, literally just scrap out of my scrap pile. And so I'm trying to carefully make sure I've got, uh, as much as possible, all the paper reinforced. I mean, that would have been, oh, spit that out. <laughs> Probably would have been really good if I would have just decoupaged most of the paper, you know? I mean, that would be kind of cool to have lots of texture underneath it and then start gluing the half glued sheets on top of that, you know? So it does take a while. At least it takes me a while. I mean, maybe y'all will be faster at this than me, but um, even though I'm not thinking hard, I am tearing and like trying it out to see if it works. And <clears throat> so it does take a little while to get this done. Uh, I found that I could do this while listening to something like an audiobook or whatever, but anything, I tried watching a show and I just, I found it really distracting to do by, with watching um, a show, but you might could, I mean, you might could watch a movie and do this. I mean, I can do other things and watch a movie, but for whatever reason, this, this process, um, I preferred just listening and not watching, I guess, because I, this is so visual and I needed to look at where things were going. So I really couldn't look at the TV, <laughs> um, or my computer, you know, watching a video or something. So, um, I just listened to things that I found that easier. The other thing that I'm thinking here, uh, like I'm not, I'm trying not to overthink. I'm really not thinking hard. It's just, I'm just trying to walk you through kind of what my, where my brain was when I'm doing this is I am looking at color like lights and darks. And that is very much a personal preference of, you know, how you like to use color. But I am thinking about that as I lay these down, you know, and where the darker purples. Where the darker and lighter shades and tones are. That's what I'm looking at. Just balance and preference, really. I'm also um, not really thinking too far in advance because <laughs> when I first did these, I tried to glue them down thinking, okay, how how is it going to look in the final product? And for me, and you may be totally different, but for me, I found that um, too difficult. <laughs> <laughs> because I really, I mean, I, it's, it's unpredictable. I feel like this whole process is very unpredictable. So for me to try to predict what it, what the final product was going to look like just made, just kind of, um, shut me down, you know, and I was really unsure about where to glue the next piece. 
So I wouldn't think about that. I would just look at each piece of paper and think, oh, I want to glue on this end. Oh, I want to glue on that end. <laughs> now, granted, if you want to have a focal point, um, then you're going to have to think about that. You know, I, my thought here, I didn't have a focal point in mind. I ended up having one, but that was um, a happy accident. But you could totally, you know, purposely have a focal point, which is really cool because I feel like the finished product with a focal point turned out really fun and I like it. And so maybe I will on another um, one of these projects purposely have a focal point. Now watch it. It won't turn out to be the focal point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, so there, if you see me keep bending the paper, what I'm doing there is I'm checking to make sure that the paper is adhered and then how is it adhered you know when I bend it I can see like what pops up and what I found is if I did that periodically sometimes where I had glued didn't fully glue for whatever reason like it needed a little more um, other times I found that it just glued differently than I thought like once I got the different layers in that section and um, so sometimes I felt like I needed to add more to that section or do something different. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm not gentle with this at all. I bend it because it's all about texture. So the more this paper gets bent and torn and folded, <laughs> um, I'm totally, I mean, that's to me, that's the whole point of this. So I don't try to be careful with this piece at all. And there you see, I'm starting to add color on the top of that receipt thing. That's really fun. I feel like in the future, I want to do some more experimenting on layering on top of larger pieces, you know, where I fully glue uh, decoupaged pieces onto the larger partially glued pieces I found in the final piece that was super interesting. And um, I think I'm going to experiment more with that. I hope if you decide to do one of these that you'll share it. I would love to see what other people come up with. Um, I feel like it's, well, a lot of projects are this way. And maybe that's why I love these kinds of projects is that the possibilities are endless, you know, and I don't think you could ever replicate this. So even if I use the same papers that you see here, which I pretty much have, uh, the same, I have enough probably, I could make another one similar size piece to this with the same papers. It would look totally different. And I love that. Doing a whole collection, too, of these for a journal would be super fun, you know? Doing two or three of them and then cutting them apart to make tags or whatever. and Or, you know, age uh, decoration tuck spots. This would be really cool cut and glued onto the edges of paper in a journal. You know, I think that would be super fun. I think this would be a great greeting card. I think you could do something super cool um, and mount something on the front, your message on the front. And then, of course, you could have a back and do whatever. If you mounted it on some cardstock or something, um, either to hide the stitches or not, you know. Now I wouldn't, I will say here though, if you, if you're, I wouldn't recommend a cardstock base because unless you're going to machine sew well, and even then I would use some caution because of all the layers, you know, sewing through all those layers, because we're going to sew, uh, I would just keep that in mind as you choose all your papers and how you're going to you choose your base paper, you know? So, okay, so we're done this and I let it uh, dry overnight and I put it under a book actually I put it in wax paper and put it under a book so I wanted it to make a lot of pressure on it to make sure everything was fully adhered and then I chose my top paper this is a um, more painted tracing paper and then I'm showing you my embroidery floss I chose to uh, hand sew this one and there's the milliner's needle that I talked about earlier that has the shaft it's the same size all the way up to the eye of the needle and if you'll see on the left those are sharps and the eye of the needle is just slightly rounded so it's a little bit bigger so for paper 
uh, well, for a lot of projects, I love to use these for embroidery in general, but um, for paper projects. And if you'll notice, I'm showing you <laughs> that I'm using all six strands. But the way I like to use six strands is I split my six strand embroidery floss into three. And you see, if you use a six strand and you and you put it through your needle, the very beginning of your needle is super chunky because it's actually um, 12 strands, you know going through your paper or your fabric. So it makes a really big hole. So what I like to do is uh, double the three strand. So that way it's even all the way through, if that makes sense. And also because you're knotting the end, you don't ever lose, your thread doesn't come out because it's knotted to your, your needle. So it's nice. So I just cut it. Um, what I did here is I made it just a tad longer on the top and the bottom. And you can experiment, see how much bigger you want your top sheet to be. Paper clip it in place or use other kinds of clips. And there's, there's the other one I did where I did machine sewing and hand sewing. And I did straight lines in that first one. So I'm trying to decide, okay, do I want to do wavy lines? Do I want to do, you know, grids? How do I want to do this? Well, I decide on the wavy line. But however you do this would be, you could do it anyway. I mean, a grid would be super cool. In fact, I think that's that might be what I do next is a grid. And I decided to use a pencil to kind of lightly follow. So I have a frame of reference and I would recommend that you always start in the center. And I always start with a back stitch. So I come up ahead of where I want to, where I want the stitch to start. And it, even though I knot the, the thread, I doing a back stitch also secures it. And then after that back stitch, um, I just do a running stitch. And a running stitch is just where you go in and out and in and out of the paper, just straight ahead. Now, because this is curved, I can't always m put a whole lot of stitches on my needle. And I'm also discovering that my hands are sore and tired. <laughs> so I went and got my leather thimble, which is a real saver. So you see there, I loaded like, I don't know, three stitches, I think, on my needle there. And you just go in and out of the paper. Um... And so I'm actually stitching like three stitches at a time. But also when you do this, uh, this curved stitch, you can't always, with paper, you can't always do multiple stitches because the paper doesn't have give. So I can only do what's basically kind of straight. And see, look, I even got some needle nose pliers because it was getting hard to pull through. And I don't know if it was just the paper. I think it was more just my hands being really tired. I've done a lot of hand sewing lately and so my hands were just kind of tired, I think is the problem. So those, that's a really good tip though, if you have a hard time pulling your needle through. And see there, I just did a back stitch to uh, what I, so I do the running stitch primarily. And then I'll, uh, I begin and end with a back stitch. And I leave about an inch of thread. So I don't knot the end, I just back stitch it a few stitches to secure it. The running stitch is pretty secure. So see how I'm doing a back stitch again? And how I like to do it is have like the fringy stuff alternating so on the fringy end this is the end that I that I ended on <laughs> I start sewing my next um, my next row of stitches so you see how I'm trying to this side I'm having a harder time loading more than one stitch on my needle so a lot of times I'm just going in and out and pulling it through and I'm only doing one stitch and then if I can get two or three or four stitches on there, I prefer that. When I'm sewing fabric, it's, you know, it's different. It's super easy to do that. So here I'm getting to the end. I'm going to do some back stitches because that's what's going to secure it. And I cut it off. So there you see, I've got it all done. I also do edge st stitches that are straight on the two long edges. You could also um, sew those edge stitches all the way around. You could only do, you know, the, the opposite to experiment. You know, you may find a way that you prefer. So like I had mentioned before, you can use an X-Acto knife or scissors. I found I preferred the scissors um, over the X-Acto knife. I, I'm not really sure why. I think it's because I kind of liked the jaggedness that the scissors did, you know, like the X-Acto knife was too perfect of a cut. <laughs> I think that's what it was. I, I don't know. I don't know. I also tend to hurt myself with X-Acto knives. <laughs> so I reserve those for projects that I have to use them for. So it's probably me too. So I don't know. 
experiment. See which way, way you like better. I didn't speed this part up so you could see how I'm carefully trying to only go through that very top layer. At, at this point, I don't want to cut through any of the paper below. And so I, it, this is very long and tedious. I didn't show you the whole thing. But once I'm done, then I'm folding it. I'm trying to pop open those seams, basically, after I've cut up. Because I'm basically cutting, you know, between each row of stitches. I didn't mention this before. I probably should have. I ended up, I did use my bone folder. Uh, you could use, you know, the your scissors or, or um, uh, I don't know something, a popsicle stick. Um, I don't know. What I found was, is I really liked having something to kind of go underneath the, uh, the paper and kind of push it up. I used my hand, my fingers too, and kind of like went up underneath the paper, but I found that it was easier and faster to use my bone folder. Um, but I think you could use scissor, like the handle of a small pair of scissors too. You know, something that will just help you get up underneath. And then on this curvy part, I found that since I basically it's the end of the curve and that paper is thicker, I needed to kind of trim it back a little bit to get it to fold open. This is also where I kind of like having the two-sided paper um, so that when it folds up, you kind of you get the another color of the underneath side of the top layer. So I won't lie, this actually... I, I this this took me forever <laughs> this process you know opening up that top layer and then the next step that you'll see in a minute this whole part the second half is uh I think it took longer than gluing it all down I didn't time it but I'm I'm pretty sure it took me longer it seemed like it because I just kept fiddling with it like I, I kept finding more things to lift up and to bend and to move and <laughs> So, and again, you'll see that I keep doing that. I keep rolling it up and because I really want to try to open things up and loosen up all this paper that's underneath. Um, I also choose to put a little dab of glue, you'll see here, to secure that thread. And that's totally optional. I would recommend, though, if you end up cutting this apart later for projects, that you do that. You know, that you go and glue your stitches wherever you cut them so that way they don't come out. And I would probably glue before you cut. You know, like glue your your cut lines, you know, and then cut away. Because once you secure it with glue, then you should be good to go. So now I've got that top layer open. So now I'm looking, and sorry, it keeps moving from the camera because so I have to look at it closely. Now I'm starting to open up all those layers that I made. And since they're on top of each other and they're not fully glued down, I'm tearing and cutting through those layers very carefully um, to open them up. And if you start to lose some paper, like it comes completely loose, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. You can always glue it back down in there if you want to, or you may find that it's good that that little piece is gone, you know, that you need that little piece to not be there anymore. So don't worry about, you know, ripping it off and it's going to, I mean, you do have to use care when you're doing this so you don't completely destroy the layers, but don't be afraid if it actually comes off, you know, you cut a piece and you go, oops, <laughs> <laughs> that paper's gone. Uh, it's okay. You can glue it back if you want to. What I found though, a lot of times when that, that happens is, um, it's actually a good thing. That piece needed to go and, um, and I didn't want it back. So another thing is your, this is why my favorite scissors would have been such a better, oops, I cut all the way through. <laughs> so there, um, yeah. So this is why you want like decoupage scissors or something really small or the, the points are smaller so you have more control. Um, even though these scissors aren't huge, the blades aren't huge, they're still not quite um, fine enough. So the small decoupage scissors really are the ideal tool for this, this part, in my opinion. Uh, it gives you a lot more control. If you do cut through like I did, uh, I'm, I just showed you my fix. It's just really fancy. <laughs> and I end up doing that several times. And part of the reason too, my scissors are, you know, a little too big. And then also there were some places where I didn't have my really thin book paper quite thick enough. Like I didn't have enough fully glued down layers. So there again, that would give you a good, <laughs> see, another good reason to, um, 
you know, make sure when you're doing your layers that you've, you've got a, you know, you don't leave any super thin book pages or whatever pages you're using exposed. That first one, the blue one that you saw in the opening, um, that's actually a tracing paper base. And um, even though it's super thin, I found it a little more sturdy than this uh, book paper, which kind of makes sense because this book paper is probably, I think this is from a book from the 60s. So it is older book paper and it wasn't a fancy book, like super nice paper. So There you go. The scrappy paper quilt is done. You'll probably want to keep messing with it though. <laughs> um, let's see, is there anything else? Oh, oh, so if you're watching this, Shelly Crafting Mamas, if you're watching this, I just want you to know, you see that eye? <laughs> oh, I just love all the stuff you make with eyes and um i just thought it was funny because this was in my stash came from a book i think and um and i had cut it out with my circle punch and i saw that it has purple and an eye and i thought oh that's kind of cool but i had no intention of like putting it in a prominent place because personally i didn't want this to have really any pictures in it that you could even make out i wanted it to be only about texture and color but as I'm gluing this down, I realize it has this prominent, I mean, almost centered part of the paper. And it just, it made me laugh. And I thought, oh, okay, it's meant to be. <laughs> Anywho. Wow, you made it all the way to the end. Thank you. I hope you found this video helpful and fun. And um, I really appreciate you watching this video. So until next time, I'll see ya.